You are now tuned in to the Project 365 Experience. Very, very excited to have uh, Coach Ray Kim um, with me. Coach Ray Kim is, he doesn't like it when I say it. I'm going to repeat it. We're just, <laughs> we're just talking off here. One of the best coaches out there in the country, just in terms of preparation, in terms of skill development, um, in terms of scouting. And I'm really interested to get into this conversation with you. So, Coach Ray, how are you doing? Good. I mean, like I said, off air too, like, damn, we won like no games and you're giving all this credit. So I feel, I feel flattered for sure. I feel flattered yeah. for sure. Yeah, I know. I know. But it's, it's how, and we were, and we're going to get into some of this, but just talk a little bit. You're, um, you're the head coach at New Horizon Academy, um, mm. assistant coach as well um, at uh, Kings Christian. Yeah. Assistant coach. Yep. And you are also the director of high performance and marketing at uh, IBSA, which is a little bit yeah. a training agency. So talk a little bit about that. Uh, so it started it started by Coach Z. Coach Z is mm -hmm. the head coach at Kings Christian Collegiate. Mm -hmm. um, I think he started in 2009. And um, I think back then, like, there wasn't any, like, I know nowadays everyone's a trainer. Every, mm -hmm. Everyone thinks they're a trainer and everyone, mm -hmm. everyone trains theirs and all that. Yep. And it's like a cool thing to do. But I think back then, like, there wasn't a uh, training only academy. So we don't even have rep teams. We don't have teams per se. Like, everyone just comes to train with us, right? So mm -hmm. we only do skill development at IBSA. Um, and it's been going strong now. Now we, we've expanded to eight different cities. I think we train over like 2,000 kids in, in, in a year. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think it's something that, you know, I think people are getting into the space of basketball training and all that. But I think, you know, we've been in this business for a long time. And mm -hmm. fortunately, you know, we're, I guess we've been doing OK. Right. So yeah, for you guys to expand, you guys are definitely yeah, doing a good sure. job. Yeah. For sure, so for sure. talk to me because. I see a lot of myself in you before we get into the question, I see a lot of myself in you. Um, how do you blend the three worlds of coaching prep boys, coaching prep girls, and also training? Are there certain similarities that you see in everything? Is it just every day you have to adjust because it's different worlds? Yeah, I think, I think in order for you to be a good trainer, um, I don't think you have to have the ability to coach. Mm -hmm. Right, like to me, like if you want to be a good trainer and you just you just want to be known as a good trainer, you can be that, right? But to me, like if you're talking about coaching, especially at this level, like I don't think you can be a great coach by also not being a great trainer. Mm. Um, so I think I think at this level you got to be able to do both, right? Um, coaching to me, coaching has a lot to do with personality personality management and you know being with the players and connecting with the players where training you know less so right like you don't have to be a great human being that that could that can connect with the players to be an excellent trainer right um but for me like as a coach you have to be you have to do both at this level right um to be good so I think it's, it's it's definitely an interesting dynamic, right? And, and when it comes to coaching girls too, it's it's whole different dynamic too. To me, like it's it's almost like different sport, right? Different sport. Like good boys, you can tell them whatever the hell you want, and they're just gonna take it and move on. Whereas girls, you have to be a bit more careful, and they're they're more. I would say they're more emotionally intelligent than the boys mostly, right? I don't wanna generalize things, but that's kind of what I've gathered from my experiences, right? So you have to be a bit different in how they treat how how you treat them, right? Um, I think when we when we first started coaching girls at Kings, you know, Z and I we we've been a boys coach for a long time and we've never coached girls and we tried to we tried to coach girls the same way we did boys, and honestly, like 
I'll, I'll be the first one to be like, okay, like we failed at that, right? For the first two years, we really, really struggled and we couldn't really connect with the girls. Um, and then we had to adapt and we quickly learned that, you know, it's a different game and we have to treat them a bit differently, right? And I think, yeah, like it's, it's just interesting to think about like they're both basketball, but very different. Very right? different. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, what would you say is the most, like if you had to choose between between one or the other, if let's say we di- we separate both, you had to mm-hmm. decide between being a trainer or being a coach. I'll right? be a coach for sure. I'll be a Why? coach for sure. Why? Um, I think, and I, I love training too, right? I love training and I love making relationships with the players and all that. But to me, like coaching has a lot more to do with, you know, you know, getting involved with their lives. In my opinion, um, it's not a, it's not just about getting them better as a, as basketball players. It has everything to do with you know making them better human beings, and maybe they're gonna have a better career when it comes to you know getting a job and whatnot after going through what we go through, right? I think I just don't think like as a trainer, just training players, you get to you get to experience the whole thing. Right. Um, I think you just you just touch on like the basketball part of it. And then you obviously hopefully hopefully make the players better. And but but that's that's pretty much it. Right. But as a coach, like I think you can really impact people. And and that's why I think like the trainers that have that approach of wanting to get to know the players. And I've seen you and you know this. Certain trainers that go, like, even though I'm training you in the session, I want to go see one of your games. Something as simple mm. as that. Like yeah. Those, like, same way as what you're saying, just relating all those worlds together, right? Like, it just stands out. And I think that's kind of heading towards the, the kind of day and age that we're in. Because it's more important yeah. to show our athletes, you know, a lot of instead of treating them like clients, treating them like mm-hmm. basketball players, you know, the more we kind of get into these situations where we treat players like people. Right. Like to me, it's what it's what I'm noticing. And that's one of the main reasons why um, I wanted to get you on. And I wanted to really attack how you go about your whole season. But mm. you know how this season is a cycle, right? There's the off season, there's the in season, then you got post season, and then after end of the year, and then you kind of like redo everything, right? Right. I really, I really wanted you to kind of like, um, I really wanted to dive in with you on just mm. um, those things, and I wanted to start with in terms of recruiting, right? If you have the ability yeah. to recruit, ability mm. to recruit, right? What are you looking for? Well, I think, well, for the first thing is definitely talent, right? Like, people who say otherwise, definitely lying, right? Like, yeah, like, yeah, people, of course, people care about, they say uh, they care about character and whatnot, but let's be honest. Like, the first thing coach looks at is the talent. But to me, it's like, to me, it's like workable talent, right? Like, does the player have enough talent level where if we were to work with them, can he be a player at the next level, right? It doesn't, he doesn't have to be, you know, a phenomenal talent. Like, of course, that would be amazing. But at the same time, like, we're at a position and I, I like to work with guys that um, lack, you know, training and lack IQ, lack whatever it may be that we, that we can work on, right? But for me, for us to work with that, like you need to have at least a little bit of talent, right? Um, and next thing for sure is intangibles, right? Which, which isn't the first thing we look at, but at the same time, but it's probably more important than the first thing that that even makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's about like you know, is he willing to be coached? Like, is he willing to be coached hard? And is he serious about his career? And academics and basketball because i like i'm confident that i can i can create an environment where he can have a 
he can have a chance to succeed, but whether like he's gonna put in the work or not is is really up to him, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that's what we look at, and you know, I I don't really look at, and I don't really listen to other coaches that say, oh, the kid is a cancer, and this this kid is you know not a good human being. Like I don't I don't really look at that stuff because I just feel like most coaches don't try to get to know the kid right um whatever they might be dealing with they just look at the kid and a kid acts acts out and you label the kid as a bad kid right to me like that's that's an unfair judgment for the player and especially mm-hmm. at a young age too right so i don't really listen to that stuff like i, I try to get to know the kid uh, like better and i think that's how we go from, you know, recruiting the player or not, right? Because your your experience might be different than somebody else's experience. Of you course. might be able you might be able to reach to them a certain way that somebody else might not. Mm-hmm. So that ultimately that changes their relationship. And it's through oh, yeah. all those different relationships, right? You you said a big word right there. You said you're confident that you could create an environment. Mm. What is that? Like creating an environment for our players. I think obviously it has to, uh, has everything to do with the culture that we set as a program and wherever we go as a, as coaches like we we try to set the culture where when when new kids come in they know exactly what to expect from themselves mm-hmm. right and they know exactly what to do right and it's it's an environment where you know obviously some people think it's hard right like because we're we're on them all the time and sure. Um, sure. Like we're 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 you know we we try to set high standards, right? And it it that has you know little things like you know showing up on class and going to class and you know getting good grades to eating right and doing extra work like like everything that you can ask like we can we can create right we can create for you like okay like you want to put in extra work we'll be there right. You want to work on, you want to watch film, we'll be there all the time. Now, you have the resources, you have the resources from the coaches as well. Like, now it's time for you to take advantage of it. Some people do, some people don't. All right, that's where good players make separation, right? Right, right. So now, so so this this is good. So now, let's say you have the ability to recruit, right? Yeah. You Now you're going into your season. Mm. Um. In terms of creating a plan and a vision with your team, how do you go about that? Um, I think, I think, um, as far as creating a vision and a plan, um, like I, I really don't like to measure our success as far as wins and losses. Good. Right. Mm-hmm. It's it's funny I say that because we just came off of a, of a shitty record season, but <laughs> yeah, but but yeah. It's, it's been like that for a long time, right? It's been yeah. like that for a long time. To me, like I try to measure success of our program and myself as a coach and as a coaching staff by seeing if our players can achieve the goals that they set when they you know when they choose to come to our program, right? Which is which is the, which is to go to the next level. Mm-hmm. Right, like, I just, I just don't think like anyone's gonna remember. Okay, that win versus this team, like, who cares, right? Like at the end of the day, like, I think, to me, a win has everything to do with okay, like, is this kid gonna go to the next level, and is he gonna choose a university that he loves, right? right? right. So, to, for as far as creating a plan, there's no, you know. Oh, let's win this. Let's do this. Let's do that. Like it's it's more okay. Let's let's get better each and every day, right? And then hopefully from September all the way until uh, April, May, like you you've have noticed the uh, difference as far as you know getting better, right? Oh, there's some good stuff, man. There's some really good stuff. <laughs> um, in terms of when you, now you're getting to that part where okay now the season's about to start and mm. like you're saying we're 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 kind of getting into it um 
I want you to kind of talk about because we we were just talking about it off air. We were saying how like, you know, a lot of times it's like you're in a situation where you don't have quote unquote the high profile names, right? Right. So so you have to build a cert, uh, certain buy in from your players, mm. yeah. right? But you might have a plan in, in your head as a coach. You might have an idea, but ultimately you have to kind of get to know your players and then you have to be adaptable, mm. right? You got to be willing to be adaptable. I want you to kind right, of talk right. about how important it is to be really open-minded coming into mm. a, coming into a season and how important yeah. it is to just be like adaptable, like that word adaptability. But I mean, to me, it's everything, right? Like you, you see like these, I'm sure you've followed college basketball and all that. Like mm -hmm. the, the coaches that are successful are the people that are willing to adapt, right? Like, and people say a lot of things about a lot of negative things about one and ones and done, one and done. But it's like, no, you, you just gotta adapt, right? A lot of people just want to go to college, and if it's good players, um, they would just want to go to college for one year and they want to leave, and you should be fine with that because that's that's the environment and that's the landscape, right? Uh, to me, like, to me, especially at this level, coaching isn't about X's and O's, right? Like, like, especially at the high school level, like some players struggle to learn the plays. Uh, some players um, struggle with confidence. Players react well to talking to them in person. Some players react well to getting yelled at, right? And it's, di it's different every year. And every player is different too, right? So... I think it's super important that you adjust and you adapt to every player's personality as well. To me, every player shouldn't be coached the same way, right? Because mm. you, I think, I think you have to have the same standards with every player, but I don't think they should coach, they should be coached the same way because you could easily right. kill a kid's confidence by just going at them when that's something that they don't, you know, they don't, uh, they don't do well with, right? Whereas some players needs, needs that pushing, like needs, uh, needs to be pushed. And if they don't get pushed, they're not going to get anything out of it, right? So to me, like, I think beginning of the year and uh, training camp is, is a time where you try to figure out the personalities, right? Um, and then, so you have a better idea going into the season, okay, like I'm going to coach this kid in different ways. And you honestly, as a coach, like you might have a wrong judgment as well, because you're only talking about beginning of the season. Right. So I, but I think the con like, con it's just the constant effort of like trying to get to know the players throughout the season is super important. In my mm. opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. So, so, Okay, so um, let me try to see how I could spin this. If let's say two, I, players... I just gave you a lot of stuff, huh? No, no, it's so much stuff. But I think also like you're 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 making me think also, and it's like, mm. so you said that everybody, you know, and you gotta kind of like coach. There's certain players you're gonna have to coach them differently, but hold them to the same standard. I don't want to put you on the spot, but could you kind of like elaborate on that? Like, what is an example of coaching somebody differently, but holding everybody to the same standard? Um, I would definitely say, you know, like not showing effort in practice, for example. That's a no. That's like every every player should come to practice, should practice if they can, and you know, give it all they got, right? And to me, like. If a kid, it doesn't matter if you're a star player, best player, the worst player, it doesn't, does not matter. If you, if you look like you don't want to be at practice, okay, you should leave. And then the next game, if we have a game tomorrow, you're definitely not playing because you don't deserve to play, right? It doesn't matter if the kid, you know, puts up 25 and 10. Like, to me, that has nothing to do with it because, and I know, I know a lot of coaches, personally that just play the best players no matter what because they like to win but to me like is that really good for the program first and two is that really good for that player as well because if he feels like he can get away with whatever like 
he's probably going to try that at the next level and will get burned. Right. So eventually, is that is that good for the kid? Is that good for his development? No. Right. So as far as standards, when it comes to practice and how they how they behave and on and off the court, like to me, like standards should be the same. Right. But I'm talking like when you do talk to a player, you know, a kid, you, you figure out, OK, like what does he react well to? What, what's that push button? Every every kid has a different push button, right? So I think you just push different buttons. That's how I like to think of it. That's really good. And yeah. okay, so so let's say we get into that yeah. game, right? You're building relationship with your players throughout the preseason. Mm-hmm. You're starting off this season. Let's just like let's compartmentalize games, right? Um, how do you go about, let's say, preparing your team? Let's say you got to play Orangeville. <laughs> let's say you got to play Orangeville. How do you go about preparing your team to, let's say, play like for a game like that? Mm. Um, and it could I, be, I, and, I it def- could, and it could, it could be specific. It could be like, okay, you know, we start scouting a day before. You know, maybe they yeah. watch film. Like, give me the the nitty gritty, the tactical. I mean, we as far as scouting goes, like we probably scout for the next game right after the game that we just had, right? Like as a coaching staff. But as far as preparing for a, for a team or whatever is, it just, it just like, to me, it's like an everyday thing, right? Like by, by just practicing hard and teaching them different things, like obviously scouting report and film we do, right? Um, like two days, we like to typically we do two days before we do scout, scouting report of what they like to do, like the plays and actions and stuff. So we can go over it after uh, at practice. Um, the day before, we like to do personnel as well, um, tendencies basically. And then uh, the, the game, on the game day, we also go over personnel and our, uh, we just go over our game plan. Right. Um, but I think I think it's it's easy for us to coach them because you know we 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 teach them different ways to play right for example like defensively like we teach switching hedging icing we teach them different ways so that like when we have to make that adjustment uh game by game or even in game they're they're all like aware of what they're supposed to do right um as far as you know scouting Scouting for players, like I think at this level, like um, we definitely look at player tendencies, but not not stuff like I remember back in college we did like okay the guy likes to do right to left crossover, like he likes to go into step back, like we did that, but I I just feel like at this level, like that's that's too like, too complicating for the players, like it's not like a kid does right to left and. You know, I go into the game, I'm playing defense on them. Like, I just feel like players don't remember that, right? So at this level, we we, we like to um, do more like, uh, like, okay, like when he gets into, gets into the paint, like the player doesn't pass, like uh, he doesn't like to kick out. So we put an extra, extra help on, on that specific player. Like that's kind of what we look at rather than like what they like to do individually. Do you... Do you have, um, let's say, an action that you found was very hard to guard that gave you more trouble? Like, even though you go over it, you go over it, we still have trouble um, with that specific action off the top of your head. Mm. Come on, come on, Ray. An action, an action that didn't make you sleep one night. You're like, yo, we gotta guard this. <laughs> uh, uh, one player scoring seventy five points on us, we'll, we'll do that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, so that was I, don't, really... I don't know. I don't know if that was an action, but yeah. <laughs> uh, it was an action for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I don't. I don't really like remember like a specific action. Like whether it's it was... whether it's whether it's side ball screens or. Just I don't know a dominant big post up. Was it a cross screen down screen? Mm. Um, 
I, I, I would definitely say that there were some teams, especially like last year. Yep. Like especially last year, like a like a Fort Erie, for example, where you know it just felt like a veteran team. Yeah. Right. Like everyone, everyone just knew how to play. Like everyone looked like college players. Right. Like they had a point guard that was unbelievable in setting up players, and they had a, a post player that could um, do a lot of damage in the paint. And obviously, you know, um, you know, obviously Leonard Miller was an amazing player as well. And I think what I struggle with the most. Uh, when it comes to teams is I, I just I just don't think I, I don't think it has anything to do with tactics or action or per se like it's it's like those like dominant players right like I remember like I remember coaching against Lou Dort Lou Dort was at uh, AI right um, and I was at Kings back then and we had a bo- we had the boys program and I, like he this guy dunked the ball so hard that the ball, like, before he landed on the floor, the ball bounced on the bounced. floor and went, went back up to the, to the basket. And you could hear a pin drop. Like, you're like, you're like what the hell? Like, what do you do, man? <laughs> what do you do? And I remember O'Shea Brissett had, like, 30 and 20 rebounds. I'm like, oh, I like what, what do you do? What Insane. can you do? Insane. Right? So Holy. <laughs> more like those guys, yeah. Yeah. So, Coach Coach Ray, you get to you get through your season. You know, let's 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 skip playoffs because that's a little bit more like specific. You know, it depends on the matchups and whatnot. I see you get through your playoffs, um, and now you got to reevaluate, evaluate mm. the team that you have, evaluate. How do you do that in an efficient way with your team? Um. In terms of like a post-season like, like at the end, like the at the end of the season type of thing. Yeah, like a postseason yeah. evaluation. Like we'll we'll typically watch watch game film a lot as well, um, and we'll figure out like what what each player needs to work on, um, and we make notes during the season as well, uh, what they would need to focus on to get to the next level, right? Um, I think I, I I think some things you, you just can't work on during the season extensively. Like like for example, a kid needs to completely change his shooting mechanics. Like uh, we're not gonna do that during the season because like we can tweak jump shots, but as far as like completely changing the mechanics, like it, it takes it takes weeks and months, right? So we don't like to do it in the game. Like we uh, during the season, we like to do it after the season where they don't have to play games. Right. So, right. Um, but we, we typically look at it in a different lens where, um, okay, this kid needs to, wants to go to the next level, needs to play, wants to play division one basketball. Okay. Like, what is it that he needs to work on? Like what, what type of, you know, I, I just, I, I bring this up because I'm, unfortunately I coached AU this summer, unfortunately. <laughs> we have a, yeah, we have a player that um, he's around six five, you know, six five, and he was he was, you know, I think the the team lost all their bigs, and he had to play the big position, six five, like six five, like you you'll know him too, but and I th- I don't think he made over ten threes in a season, right? But I think he's athletic enough. He's he's able to do a lot of things, and he might have a chance to go down to the states as well. But I told him straight up, I'm like, you're not gonna not shoot from the perimeter and you know go go to Division One. Every time, like every time you catch the ball at the perimeter, you're gonna shoot. Like every time you're open, you have to shoot, no matter what. Like you miss, make, I don't give a shit. You shoot it. And you know how AAU is, like, you don't practice that much and you have limited time, so it's not like prep season, but this kid made an unbelievable adjustment when it comes to that. Like, he's, I think he's average, like, the first ever game we had uh, as a team, he had four threes. He's, I think he's averaging, like, three threes a game, right? So 
I think that's something that we do, you know, I would like to think that we do better than some of the programs is that we know what type of skills that you have to have as a player to go to the next level. Right. So, yeah. And it, and it starts and it starts with the coach. <laughs> uh, yeah, it really does. It starts with the coach. Coach Ray, thank you. Thank you so much. I got a one last question for you. Mm. Your shoe, your shoe box collection behind you. How many shoes do you have in your house? <laughs> oh my goodness. In my house? Uh, I would say like 60, 70 pairs. It's not and a bad then, number. Yeah, and then we, uh, you know, and then you, you got to get into the storage and whatnot. Like, hey, we, we, hey. we were, it's another, it's another beast. <laughs> Hey, we were as a we kid, were, yeah yeah you were saying no as a, as a kid like i couldn't afford all the shoes that i love shoes but i couldn't afford them and so when i when i first started earning actual money that's kind of when that's what i splurged on right so got to got to got to but again we we're right. talking about it man we got the best job in the world we get to affect the life of the lives of young men and young women so and again, going back in it, I said you're one of the best. I truly mean it, my friend. Um, where can people find you? Where can people find you and um, plug your business too, please? Uh, IBSA Basketball, at IBSA Basketball on Instagram. Um, Instagram, my per personal account, I'm Ray Kim. Um, you know, you don't have to find me. It's okay. Like, I'm not, I don't, I don't. <laughs> I don't want you to find me. If you find me, <laughs> if you find me, go ahead. But hey, uh, you don't have to. You don't have to. <laughs> really cool yeah. guy, and honestly, one of the best coaches we have out here. I'm gonna keep saying it. I know it makes you uncomfortable. I'm gonna keep saying it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't done shit, so I haven't done anything. So I don't know why you keep saying that. But, I mean, <laughs> people are gonna laugh at it too. But hey, well, I'll, 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 I'll try to be my best. <laughs> That's all that matters. Okay. Appreciate okay. you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right.